So one thing that my family asks me all the time, and um, they always tease me about this and I don't know why they do, um, especially my mom, but uh, one thing that they tease me about is every single time I come up with a new idea for a story or I tell them about a new story that I'm working on, the first thing that they always ask is, oh, and does the mother die in this one? And I have no idea why they ask me that. I mean, it's not like the first story that I ever wrote was about a girl whose mother was burned at the stake or um, that my debut uh, novel was about a girl whose mother dies of a brain tumor and that every single story just about that I wrote between the two had to do with an orphan or a motherless daughter. But um, clearly my parents think that I'm some kind of mom killing psychomaniac or something like that. But the truth is I've just always, you know, um, been really interested in writing stories about people who either their parent dies or their friend dies or someone dies and somehow it changes them and it, it usually it, it adds to the story and so that's how I justify it and it helps make the character become a stronger person. But lately I've been thinking a lot about this idea of killing off characters in books and whether or not it's really that strong of a thing to do or whether it's just a sign of you know weakness or laziness on behalf of the author. And I'm definitely not saying that it's never a good idea to have a character in your book die. I mean, obviously, um, in my first book, um, Allie's mother passes away, and that's a huge um, role in the story, and it changes Allie as a person, and it sets her off on her journey and shapes the way that she feels and thinks about things. But that's not always the case, and I think that too often people kill off characters in their books um, when it's not really necessary. And I'm just saying, as, an, as a reader, um, when I am reading your book, I'm taking an emotional investment in your story and I am meeting your characters and I like them and I'm becoming friends with them and you know, I'm interested in it and then when one of them dies, I'm mad because you killed off my favorite character and that makes me want to shut your book and not recommend it to any of my friends, you know, if it doesn't do anything to help the story. And so I think that as an author, you have to be careful of a few things when you're killing off characters. And the first thing is, like I said, readers tend to get angry when their favorite character dies. Like, readers are very emotional people, I have realized. And um, while it can be a good thing, and it can, you know, make them become more emotionally invested in the story and draw the reader along, it can also turn some readers off. And you just have to be aware of that. I have friends who do not like books with sad endings because they say that, um, it depresses them and makes them want to go punch the author in the face. So hopefully um, no one will ever say that about me. I would be horrified probably and, you know, very sad if someone said that. But it's the truth. Some people just don't like it and it's, you're going to lose readers because of it. And even people who do like it will admit that it's depressing. Which is my second point. It's really depressing when a character dies. Um, and it just adds this whole gloom part to your story and there's nothing you can't really add any humor or get any funniness or or lightness out of a funeral or a death there's really I can't think of any ways to do it and so unless you're prepared for that um, you just have to you know realize that when you're doing that in a story it's really going to add a sort of dark spot to your story you have to be prepared for that and you have to you know be able to move on despite all that doom and gloom and I think another thing is whenever somebody a character dies it affects everybody in the story. Like when someone in real life dies, it affects the mother and the father and the children and the siblings and the best friend. And you know, when you're working through all that as an author and trying to make all these different characters respond to somebody's death, you lose focus on the main character, which is what should be you know the main part of the story. And you lose focus on their story and their feelings and their thoughts and their journey. So it takes so much more work to have to, you know, keep the main character story going while dealing with all this other little stuff that's going on at the same time, and it, it loses the impact of the story. So I'm definitely not saying that you should never kill off a character. I mean, I have done it in the past, and I will probably most definitely do it in the future. But I'm just saying it has to be a really important part of the story. It has to be something that will move the main character forward and change the way they view life and change the way that they think and that they react and they behave and it has to make them stronger in the end and it has to do all those things in order for it to be justifiable and if it's just if you just put it in there because it makes you feel romantic or tragic or like some kind of great author for having this depressing death scene that's not really a good enough reason um, because that's just doing it for selfish or lazy reasons or whatever when it doesn't really add to the story so I'm just encouraging you all to think about this I'm still thinking about it myself and um, Think about other creative ways that you can add depth and meaning to a story without having to kill off a character. 
you know, sad things can happen without someone having to die. So there's other stuff you can add in, and I just encourage you to be creative and to think through everything before you do something like that and to see if it's really going to make your story stronger in the end or not. So uh, I'd be interested in hearing what you think about the subject. Do you love sad, tragic, romantic deaths, or do you think that they're depressing and gloomy and they make you not want to read the book anymore? I mean, I've heard both sides of the story, so um, I'd be interested in knowing if you agree with me or disagree with me and why, and just your thoughts on the topic. And I'll see you all again next week.